Hello, and welcome to Least Queries Accountants Angle, a podcast where our experts answer your most burning questions regarding accounting topics and upcoming changes. I'm your host, Emily Fish, Product Accounting Manager here at Least Query, and today I'm joined by Abdi Ali, Technical Accounting Manager at Least Query, to talk through a quick guide on GASB 87. Thanks for joining us today, Abdi. Let's get started. At a high level, what exactly is GASB 87 and when does it go into effect? Yep, great question. Thanks, Emily. <clears throat> so GASB 87, new to probably a lot of us. Well, GASB 87 is a new lease accounting standard for governments reporting entities, uh, whereby all leases that are deemed in scope are going to be capitalized and recognized on the statement of net position or, for many of you, the balance sheet. <clears throat> now, it was previously delayed you know, much to the appreciation of everyone involved, I would say, um, due to in the initial onset of COVID. But uh, the eventual effective date was pushed forward about 18 months, I would say, to for all fiscal years starting after June 15th of 2021. Now, at the time of this recording of this podcast, um, that's already passed. So really, when we think about it, any entity that it has a, let's say, a fiscal year starting July 1st of 2021, they're actually going to be the first ones to go through that full cycle of reporting when it comes to preparing their financial statements next year, uh, June 30th, uh, and you know, per reporting under GASB 87. So we can ask them how that goes. But pretty much, <clears throat> it went into effect this past summer. And the entire premise for this change where, um, is pretty much where lessees and lessors are now going to be recognizing these lease assets, the ones that are in scope, that's important to kind of throw out there. Those are gonna be recognized on the balance sheet. And really the, the gist of it is to really increase the usefulness and the transparency of these financials at, for the everyday user at the end of the day. And just really in, so that we can kind of evaluate the, 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 how the, fu- the, the, the system or the government is functioning. Um, <clears throat> now, what's really happening in layman's terms, we wanna take a step back is that we're going from a model under the legacy accounting for GASB, where you had two different classifications of leases, both operating and capital, and now going towards a single model approach where we're now recognizing and capitalizing everything as a finance lease. So that's really the biggest change. And the fact that it's happening both on the lessee side and the lessor side is, is a key distinction when we compare this to other lease accounting standards that have gone into effect in the past. Yeah, one additional point of clarification uh, for all the listeners. Um, when, we th- when we say GASB and in particular GASB 87, we're really talking about this being a clip applicable to state and local governments as well as government run entities such as you know higher education, whether it's colleges and universities, hospitals and uh, school districts, just to name a few. So if you know the topic of federal government ever comes into play, those would actually, the federal governmental entities would actually be held to a different uh, accounting standard altogether, the Federal Accounting Standards Advisory Board. Um, and that's where their lease accounting would stem from. So for t- for just for context for today, governments at a state and local entity level, uh, we're really talking about those in particular, and we're talking, and those would be the ones reporting specifically under GASB, and in particular, GASB 87, as we talk about leases. Okay, so you mentioned leases in scope a couple of times. So tell me, has the definition of a lease changed under GASB 87? And then what kind of leases are in scope versus out of scope? Yeah, another great question. Um, the definition, definition has definitely gone a little bit more thorough. Um, doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room for misinterpretation, I would say. Um, pretty much the guidance spe- uh, defines a lease as a contract that, and there's gonna be a couple of buzzwords we wanna call out, a contract that conveys control, number one, of the right to use another entity's non-financial asset, so it's a non-financial intangible asset for a specified or prescribed period of time. So that's gonna be a prescribed lease term in exchange or in an exchange or an exchange like transaction. So that's another important distinction there. When we talk to some governmental entities, we come, they come to the realization that, oh, we have this lease for real estate, for example, and it's, you know, it's for a dollar a year. You know, that's not going to be in any measurement a exchange-like transaction. You're pretty much getting a unheard of bargain. So um, so when we go by the definition, once again, just to put it together succinctly, it's a contract that conveys the control of the right to use another entity's non-financial asset for a prescribed period of time 
in exchange in an exchange or exchange like transaction. Now, <clears throat> I did mention a couple of times, you know, the buzzword in scope. And, you know, to, to that point, there are some assets that are actually going to be scoped out when we think about, you know, uh, transitioning to GAS 87 or capitalizing these leases. And the guidance is pretty actually fair and thorough in terms of what those types of assets are. And we'll just list out uh, several of them today. So the first one is going to be, you know, lease of intangible assets. Intangible assets, for example, that could be the right to explore for natural resources, or if you're in the film industry, maybe the licensing contract for films and so on and so forth. Um, we can also throw in their biological assets, like maybe for timber or um, a living uh, plant. Um, and then also inventory. Inventory is not going to be in scope there. Many of you guys are probably taking a deep breath. Um, for some government, into, governmental entities, you guys may have service concession arrangements. For example, you may be an airport. Um, so those actually have a distinct standard under GASB that deals with that or uh, uh, guide, guidance or interpretation, if you will. Uh, supply contracts is another one, you know, for maybe a power purchase agreement that you have with another vendor. Um, and then the last two that I want to throw out there um, are probably more common across any type of governmental entity. And the first one is leases that may have title transfer, which convey the, the ownership of the lease to the, to the eventual uh, lessee at the end of the contract. Now, that is going to be scoped out, and that's actually going to be considered a financing arrangement under the new standard. And the last but not least is short-term leases. So short-term leases, by definition, it all makes sense to us at the end of the day. It's, it's going to be a lease that is 12 months or less, right? But in essence, there's a little bit more nuance to it. When we think about short-term leases under GASB 87, and we're evaluating this, and mind you, this is as of the transition date going forward. Um, so we are going to factor in um, any periods um, of renewal options that are provided to us as the uh, um, as a lessee or the lessor. So essentially, you know, prior to this, if your understanding of it was that a short term lease is 12 months or less, that's pretty much still consistent. But now when you're evaluating if this should be a long term lease, you're also going to have to throw in any renewal options that are provided to you um, or that exist within the contract. Um, and that's going to help determine, you know, if this is short term or long term. Um, the confusion typically arises because, you know, some clients we work with will say, hey, we have no intention of actually electing this renewal. Why is it going to be a part of it? And the guidance makes it really specific where it doesn't matter about your intention to renew. Irre regardless of that, we're going to look at this renewal option and factor it in to assess whether it crosses through the threshold, the, th the, the entire lease term crosses the threshold of being a short-term lease um, um, or a long-term lease. So that's a long-winded response, but hopefully it, it kind of clears up some, some of the confusion that may exist around that topic. And overall, just in terms of items that are scoped out for GASB 87. No, I think it definitely does. Thank you so much for that information, Abby. And thanks to our listeners for joining today's Accountants Angle. Remember, you could submit your questions for upcoming podcasts and our experts will share their insights. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.